All right, today I'm going to take the liberty of being someone who doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I want to explore something or share with you what I'm exploring currently, I guess, in my spiritual practice. Uh, it's a combination of things that we've talked about, which I find very interesting. Uh, it's I'm looking at Jnana Yoga from the perspective of, of a devotional practice, as well as from the words of, a, of a, someone doing a knowledge practice or a Jnana Yoga practice and trying to come up with a synthesis uh, or an understanding, trying to add to an understanding from both sides. So uh, this first reading that I'm going to do here is from uh, Swami Turiyananda in, in the book Spiritual Talks. There's two pieces here of information that he gives us. I want to share them with you. I'm not going to say a whole lot because, like I said, this for me is experimental. <laughs> he says here, there is a place even in this body Okay, that means even in the, the body and, and place that, that we experience now as ourself, there is a place even in this body where the mind being pitched or being established, a point of being, one can perfectly be at ease. What is required is a change of the angle of, ver of vision, a, a change in perspective, a change in understanding from what assumptions we are viewing this experience of life in its totality. Viewing the mind, viewing our body, viewing all of the ideas and ideation that we've accumulated over time. That there exists a place of perfect tranquility, perfect peace, even here and now in this body. And all it requires is to find that point of perspective, to find uh, that sense of being that will unlock that view, that, that experience of being. He gives us a little clue. He says, there is no escape from trials and difficulties by flying from them. So we, it's not a matter of escape. This is a change in perspective. It's a change in viewing, all right? Now he goes on to say over here, uh, four pages later, he says, we can be at perfect peace if we resign ourselves to the Lord. Let him do what he thinks best. It is foolishness to dictate terms to him as regards his dealings with us. Once you have surrendered yourself at his feet, there should be no room left for the assertion of your individual will. He knows what is best for you. Even if you pray for what is not desirable, he will do the right thing for you. Okay, now what I'm understanding here is that the act of surrender is the process of neti neti for the jnani. Going through and rejecting all ideation of self, anything that would involve a will, something that we want or desire, including our very identification, uh, who we think we are or describe ourselves to be, that we lay everything down at the feet of the Lord, total and complete surrender. We have no opinion, we have no ideation, we have uh, nothing. It's, it's a zero point. Now I'm gonna combine that with something that I'm reading in a book uh, called I Am That from Sri Nishragadatta, which I share from quite a bit. It's a little bit of a longer reading, but see if we can line this up here. He says, the questioner says, I know what I know myself to be. All right, a bold thing to say to a guru. The guru answers, you cannot possibly say what you are you think yourself to be, or you cannot possibly say that you are what you think yourself to be. Your ideas about yourself change from day to day and from moment to moment. Your self-image is the most changeful thing you have. It is utterly vulnerable, at the mercy of a passerby. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Someone could say, hey, you look great today. Someone could say, hey, I, you, you, you look weird. And immediately, you know, you're, you're thrown off balance. <laughs> it's funny. A bereavement, the loss of a job, an insult, and your image of yourself, which you call your person, changes deeply. To know what you are, you must first investigate and know what you are not. <laughs> and to know what you are not, you must watch yourself carefully, rejecting all that does not necessarily go with the basic fact, I am. The ideas... I am born at a given place, at a given time, from my parents, and now I am so-and-so, living at, married to, father of, employed by, 
and so on are not inherent in the sense of I am. You see, so it's that complete surrender, again, that, that we're talking about at the feet of the Beloved. Letting go of all ideation of yourself and leaving it to the Beloved alone to provide that information. Now that information is going to come from an infinite place and it's going to betray an infinite image of God within. So really what we are becoming in this act or in this practice, not becoming, but what we're realizing, is that we, we turn into a gigantic ear, just an absolute receptacle of this divine presence. Nothing else, you know, nothing else. Separate consistently and perseveringly the I am from this or that. So separate this unchanging sense of being from anything that changes. You know, do things like uh, move your body in a, in, a, in a rhythmic way until it's kind of just going. And then start paying attention to the part that's not changing within you. Uh, start singing a song or say your mantra in the mind and start opening to, the, to that which is not changing in the mind as the thoughts are moving, as the body is moving. So that is going to be the process of this, not this, not this, not this. I am not these things, I am not these things, I am not these things. Stepping backwards and try to feel what it means to be, just to be, without being this or being that. All our habits go against it, and the task of fighting them is long and hard sometimes. But clear understanding helps a lot. The clearer you understand that on the level of the mind, you can be described in negative terms only. So you have no attribute. When you are surrendered completely to the beloved, which is what we're talking about from the, from the devotional presence, the devotional perspective, when you're completely surrendered, you are nothing but what you are given. And that you have no control, no say, no definition of. You are simply a receiving receptacle. The clearer you understand that on the level of the mind you can be described in negative terms only, the quicker you will come to the end of your search and realize your limitless being. See, it's that limitless being that is the reason that we can't assign any, uh, any attributes to ourselves at all. It's the reason that the mind can only... We can only say, not this, not this. And in, in, in this perspective that, that seems to grow in my mind, we, we literally back in to the arms of the Divine Mother, back into the arms of the Beloved, simply by surrendering, letting go all of the trinkets that we have in the mind uh, that describe what and who we are. 